Hi, my name is Michael and I'm the developer of the first person RPG Monomyth. I've been working on this project for a couple of years now and I wanted to give you a quick update on what's been going on and how I plan to proceed. Monomyth features a vast underworld with many different environments caves, castles, sewers, temples, barracks, rivers, waterfalls, mines. There's certainly no lack of variety even though the game is set on the ground. A good chunk of this game world has been planned and implemented already, whereas a good bit is still missing. To speed up the creation of these environments, I'm repurposing Unreal Engine's Tile Map Editor. I draw different layers of a map in 2D, which is then interpreted as a 3D environment. This makes it much easier to quickly block something out rather than with the regular UE4 tools. It can also be used for more complex structures, like this underground 3 level tower. I spent a lot of time on making the world in Monomyth highly interactive and detailed. Your character can swim and dive through water. There are secret walls and treasure, there's alcohol that affects your vision, there are musical instruments and you can even bake bread. It was important to me that all this interactivity still feels believable, so there is only a minimum of menu interaction involved. Combat plays a major part in every RPG, that is, unless you are more of a stealthy type, which we will cover in a minute. Combat in Monomyth happens in real time. You have to move, dodge, actively attack, block, parry and keep an eye on your stamina or you will be open to enemy attacks. Certain enemies are weak to certain damage types and therefore certain weapons. Talking of enemies, there is quite a bit of enemy variety in Monomyth. You have your typical bandits, rats, slimes, and some of these cause specific status effects. The bite of a rat can poison you, the slime can blur your sight, there are also enemies with ranged weapons like archers. Later in the game you will encounter larger enemies, which I don't want to spoil yet. Naturally, in an RPG, regular weapons aren't the only way to defend yourself. In Monomyth, there are plenty of spells some of which are even vocalized. There are three magic schools. The Cosmic School, which is mostly about healing damage, the Aura School, which is a utility-focused school, and the Divine School, which mostly contains your typical priest and cleric spells. If you are looking for a less confrontational playstyle, you might be interested in Monomyth's stealth system. NPCs register the player character by sound and by visibility. If you are close to a light source, like a candle or a torch, you are fully visible, whereas the shadows offer relative safety from your enemy's eyes. Your visibility is shown by the four arrows around the interface's corsair. If they are fully visible, it means that you are fully visible. To stack the odds in your favor, you can use magic arrows to douse torches. Small light sources, like candles, can just be blown out. To support you in your roguish endeavors, you can fall back on lockpicking and distracting enemies by throwing items to make noise. When an enemy AI is alerted, it will first look for the player before it attacks. It is designed this way to create interesting encounters and deepen the experience with a stealthy playstyle. All character actions are based on a detailed character system. The system consists of 8 main attributes, 3 derived attributes, 10 side attributes and 11 character skills. These skills include things like athletics and anatomy, stealth and lockpicking, speech and searching and various combat skills. The inventory allows the player to use items, combine them with elements in the world like in an adventure game, drop them and ready them for quick use. To be ready for different encounters, your character can also equip an alternative weapon loadout. 
Not every character in Monomyth is hostile. Some have information about the world and your quest. The dialogue system is a combination of keyword-based conversation topics and dialogue trees. With the speech skill, your character gains further conversation options. There is no classic quest log in Monomyth. Instead, your character takes notes in their journal. You can get information from other characters or various documents you find throughout the world. Now that we have covered what has been done, the natural follow-up question is what still has to be done to complete this project. Content creation. All of these nice spells and weapons and items mean nothing if you don't get the chance to use them. Now the good part about this is, content creation is sort of a grind. Of course you gotta come up with meaningful challenges, but most of that is already planned out, so it is mostly about actually implementing that stuff and testing it properly. Another thing are NPCs. I'm currently working on a modular NPC system to simplify the creation of humanoid characters and to keep the project scalable. Besides that, the project still needs some additional audio and 2D art, an overhaul in the quest system and one thing above all, polish. So when is all of that coming? Well, here's the thing. My contract as an academic researcher is ending by late February. I mention that specifically because I'll still have an oral examination on my thesis around that time, which means that development will be very slow until then. So till the end of February don't expect too much. However, the second my examination is done, I will focus my entire attention to the completion of my passion project. I'll be setting up a business and there will be a Kickstarter campaign to finance the rest of development. So far, Monomyth has been a very cost-effective project, so it will be a comparatively small campaign goal, mostly to finance additional audio. During that campaign, you will finally be able to try Monomyth yourself with a little demo. So I'll leave you with that. I wish you a good start into the new year. I'll see you around the end of February, when all of my day job stuff is done, and we can take this whole project to the next level. Until then, you can wishlist the game on Steam, I will include a link in the video description, and you can also follow me on Twitter for regular updates on the project's state. Have a good one, and see you soon!